another edition of the Hot Seat. This is Ray Motor from ACG, and recently there were some major announcements from Juniper on the service provider core space. They announced some capacity and record-breaking numbers, and as you know, what we tend to do in the Hot Seat is we gather a lot of service provider questions and a lot of equity analyst questions, and we tend to do a deeper dive. Joining us today is Luke Coopin, who's Vice President of Product Marketing for the IPG Group for Juniper. Thanks for joining us, Luke. Very much, Ray. What we wanted to do today, Luke, is actually, even before we get started with some of the questions, why don't we get a, a motivation behind the product? I mean, the economic climate, as you know, where it is today, there, there's perception of even further dips uh, or double-dip recession. What are some of the motivating factors behind announcing this new core router? Well, Ray, despite the, the recession, the networks keep growing. You know, you could actually make a case that every time there is an economic recession, people use networks even more. They avoid traveling, you know, they, they use video conferencing more, so networks are in higher uh, use. And the motivation behind T4000 is really uh, responding to our customers' requests to keep expanding the product line and, and make the routing platforms, specifically the core routing platforms, uh, denser and denser, you know, keep increasing the capacity because they need to move so much more data uh, quarter after quarter, year after year. Okay, good. Now, uh, regarding the announcement, can we talk about the past and the present? With this announcement, what are some of the features that are different compared to some of the previous uh, routing announcements? So it's really a, an extension in capacity. So you maintain uh, all the features that were available in T640 and T1600. You just, you know, uh, double the capacity of the system. So you maintain the footprint. You just uh, increase the forwarding rate, increase the overall capacity, increase the port density. Because we believe that, um, you know, the ratio of, of size of the equipment uh, personal capacity and density is really what drives the economics in the core. Right, okay, yeah, makes sense. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there were over 6,000 T products sold mm -hmm. um, in the past. Now, when there's a new announcement like this, one of the things that we hear from a lot of carriers is investment protection. What have you done regarding this new product to address them monetizing their existing equipment? Uh, the, the D series. Um, can be upgraded uh, across the entire portfolio. So any T640 that is installed in the field, any T1600 installed in the field can be upgraded to become a T4000. Okay. And, and that upgrade can actually be executed in about 90 minutes okay. and consists of um, swapping out power supplies, fan trays, and then ultimately um, the um, switching infrastructure as well. Right. And, and the advantage of the upgrade is that whatever is installed in the existing router can be reused. Okay. Uh, so that literally a machine, once the switching fabric is upgraded, uh, a machine can be upgraded on a per slot basis okay. by uh, replacing or installing the appropriate um, PFC. PFC is right, great, yeah. Now in the past, as you know, I used to install and design a lot of these wide area networks. Now, when people used to call me for core router implementation, there were primarily two reasons. They either had an existing capacity issue or there was a new application being deployed now. That was some time ago, back when I had hair, so it was a while back. Uh, <laughs> now, have those requirements changed at all? In, in the core of the network is really um, all about capacity and, and moving you know, uh, the, 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 the most amount of information at the lowest possible cost. Okay. Uh, there are some service providers that deploy T-Series as a, a high capacity edge platform mm -hmm. as well. Right. Uh, because the 10 gigabit Ethernet density is very important mm -hmm. um, for them. But ultimately it's all about building bigger nodes okay. and, and people typically have the choice, you know, if you have a single chassis system, you can grow it by, you know, building it into a, a multi-chassis system. Right. Okay. But that increases operational complexity. Mm -hmm. Um, so every time a, a, a bigger single chassis system becomes available, um, service providers tend to migrate to that. Right, okay. uh, and then, you know, it's, it's a kind of cyclical um, effect. They, they deploy that single chassis system. When they grow out of uh, slot capacity, yeah. they turn it into a multi-chassis system. Right. And then when the newer, denser 
signal chassis system becomes available, they migrate to that. So right. it's all about operational optimization, really. Now, just to add on to that, what applications do you see um, this product having a good fit for moving forward? Uh, in the core of the network is really to, to support uh, the, the, the massive amount of capacity that is needed, in, uh, certainly in applications uh, like video. Right, right. Uh, we all read, you know, that Netflix now is about 30% of, of the traffic on some of the backbones, and, and it's going to get worse. Right. Okay. Um, so, and that's why you know people need bigger and bigger systems, right. and it's actually um, accelerating. Right. You okay. know, when we introduced T six forty in two thousand and two, um, you know, everybody said this machine is way <laughs> this machine is way too big. Right. Right. Who is ever going to use that? Right. And before we knew it, people were putting it in data centers, right. even okay. in enterprises. Right. Okay. And 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 we continue to see this effect to the point that. Some of our larger customers um, say the moment we introduce a new platform, yeah. they sometimes say you should have made it bigger. <laughs> okay, yeah, interesting. Now, uh, just regarding this announcement, one of the questions that came back from a few providers was uh, a little bit of confusion on the MX versus the T4000. Do you could you clarify on when they should consider the MX product versus the T product? There. Yeah, there's a few basic. Um, uh, parameters or, or decision points that you can consider. Um, MX is really all focused on Ethernet, carrier Ethernet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, op it's a platform that is optimized for that. While the T-Series has a much broader um, support for interfaces. Right. You know, the, the traditional interfaces, ATM, Sonnet, mm -hmm. SDH, mm -hmm. also 10 gigabit Ethernet, 100 gigabit Ethernet. So that's one major right. differentiation. So yeah, and then we have to look at really the the scaling. Right. You know, okay. if if the network is going to grow beyond a single chassis, you have to go to uh, a T series because that's the only mm -hmm. platform that supports a multi chassis configuration. Right. So those are those are really the two drivers. Right. With an MX, you know, you could start with an MX two forty, mm -hmm. but an MX two forty can never migrate to an MX four eighty. Okay. So that right. becomes a forklift upgrade. So it becomes more of a, a planning exercise, looking forward to mm -hmm. you know to what extent is this network going to grow? Right. Do I have legacy interfaces? Yes or no? Okay. Uh, you know what density am I looking at? Right. Okay. Things like that. It's good to clarify that because uh, I think that was always a concern. But the legacy part as well is a key one. Now, as you know, I always do regarding a new router announcement or switching is clarification on the math. We've heard numbers from certain reports where they put 250 gigs, 240 gigs. Could you help clarify the math and some of the capacity issues uh, on the T4000? Sure. Um, so from a per slot capacity is 240 gigabits per slot. Right. So it more than doubles the capacity of T1600, okay. which had 100 gigabits per slot. Mm -hmm. um, where the 250 comes from is the forwarding. So 250 million packets per second per slot. Right. Um, so giving you um, just over um, two, billion two billion packets per second for a, for a system. Okay. Great. So that, that that that's really the difference. Yeah. You know, the ASIC support 250 gigabits, but the system is uh, is optimized for 240. 240. Uh, right. Spread over two um, forwarding engines of 120 gigabit each. each. Okay. So that's where you know. Comparing to a T1600, we yeah. can double yeah. the 100 CD right. uh, density. Right, okay. Um, now, I guess, when is this product available? Um, second half, we'll start shipping second half of next second year. Second half of this year, great. Right. So we've demonstrated it at supercomputing, okay. demonstrated interoperability with MX at 100 gigabit. So okay. to show that you know the platforms continue to evolve and, mm -hmm. and, and inner work to, to create end-to-end um, -end solutions right. for our service provider customers. Right. Well, Luke, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome, Appreciate Ray. Appreciate you joining the Hot Seat. This is Ray Moda with Luke Coopin from Juniper. This is another edition of the Hot Seat. Thank you very much.